Hi, uh, I've just finished my exam period. So I'm back. This is another video about cadence. In the previous video of the introduction of cadence, I introduced some basic steps so we can build a um, low pass filter and test the characteristic of the low pass filter with some input sine wave at a specific frequency. However, in this video, we will go a little bit uh, more deeply into the low pass filter. First, I would like to introduce the theory how to define the characteristic or how to find the transfer function of a low pass filter. How could we design the bandwidth of the low pass filter? If you are um, not interested in the theory part because it's too easy for you, you can go straight to the last half of the video where I will demonstrate the simulation in the frequency domain the characteristic of the low pass filter in cadence and firstly let's go through the theory so this is the low pass filter the low pass filter will consist of a input voltage and that input voltage could be the combination between DC and AC however in this case for um, easy illustration I would just choose the AC source and um, because it's low pass so first we will need the first order low pass make it simply we will just saying low pass filter okay with this simple circuit we'll say it low pass filter because we have only one capacitor so it's a first order low pass filter so to have a low pass filter first we need to have the resistor and then we need the capacitance and in order to define the low pass filter, we need to define where is the output because the way that we define the output will define the characteristic of the circuit itself. If you take the output uh, somewhere here, so it's not the low pass filter anymore, okay? But if you take the output here at the capacitor, then it will be the low pass filter. Why? Why it's called low pass filter? We'll see, okay? But now, let's say we have this circuit, we have the input here, and we have the output here. Define the input and the output properly. Also define the characteristic of the circuit that we are analyzing. The way that we will show why this characteristic is low pass is in the frequency domain, and we need to know about the Fourier transform. Um, you can to have the feeling, you can uh, refer to the books in the reference section, in the comment section of the video. But here, I would just assume that we already know what is Fourier transformation, and it's very easy. So approach in this way is very intuitive of what we usually calculate with a very fundamental circuit, where the circuit contains only resistor. Now it has a capacitor. It it's no different. The only difference is we can imagine the capacitor as a symbol, as a special resistor, and the resistance in this case will be called impedance. And we say the impedance is ZC, and the impedance ZC is calculated with this formula. Furthermore, if we talk about the resistor, then the impedance of the resistor is just simply the resistance of the resistor itself. So in the fundamental circuit theory, if you are not sure about what are the fundamental theory circuit to calculate the voltage, the current, please refer to the books that I list in the reference comment of this video. But here I would just simply assume that you already know it. So now if we want to calculate the V out, when we have the input voltage, we just simply find the current going through the capacitor. V out is the voltage on the capacitor, right? So we just need to know the current going through the capacitor times the impedance of the capacitor, which we can imagine as if it was a resistor. So the current times the impedance, we have the voltage. Very, very simple. So how can we find the current going through the capacitor? In this case, you can see everything's in series. So if we can find the total current going through in this circuit, that 
current will be the current going through the capacitor so also and here we can find the total impedance of the circuit so we can just take simply the voltage the total voltage input of the circuit over the total impedance of the circuit will have the total current going into this circuit so the total current sorry the total impedance will be because the resistor is in series with the capacitor so the total impedance will be the impedance or the resistance of the resistor plus the impedance of the capacitor so here we have the total current equal to the impedance of the capacitor plus the impedance of the resistor which is the resistance itself plus the impedance of the capacitor that we defined earlier when we have the total impedance we can find the total current by taking the total voltage input over the total impedance so with this term what do we have we have the total current going through the circuit and because everything is in series so the total current is also the current going through the capacitor in order to find the voltage on the capacitor we can simply just take the current going through the capacitor times the impedance of the capacitor so here we have the current going through the capacitor times the impedance of the capacitor so now we have the output voltage now we will define the transfer function the transfer function will be the one help us to know that the circuit is low pass filter sorry that I put two equal signs just imagine that as if it was only one equal sign please forgive me for this mistake so now if you wanna find the transfer function how do we do that? we will take the output signal we will take the ratio of the output signal over the input signal so here we have the voltage out over the voltage in and it just simply this ratio of the impedance the capacitor over the total impedance of the circuit so we will obtain this formula and this formula represents the circuit characteristic and after we have the transfer function if we specify a specific value for our resistor and capacitor then we can start to plot this one and how to in order to plot this one against the frequency we first have a observation that the angular w is the angular frequency and angular frequency is equal to 2 pi frequency so if we plot this imaginary I mean imaginary formula with the independent variable frequency with a specific value RC we can obtain something like this DB the first plot is the amplitude of the transfer function and the second plot is the angular of the frequency why it has amplitude and angular as you can see when you look at here is a complex is a complex number if we have a specific frequency F we have specific frequency angular frequency we have a one complex number and a complex number has the amplitude and the angle if we have the frequency a lot of frequencies then we have a, a lot of complex numbers and each complex number is presented here at a frequency we have a complex number of the transfer function we have the amplitude and angle at another frequency we also have an amplitude and an angle so here is like a package of complex numbers against the frequency presenting our transfer function so if we look in here we can easily see that that transfer function has 0 dB whenever the frequency is less than roughly like 1 kilohertz of course to have such a characteristic we already defined the specific value for R and C the bandwidth of the low pass filter is the point 
where we have the frequency and we have minus 3 dB. So if we look at here, of course it doesn't show, but because I choose the value specifically to obtain such a characteristic, so I know that at this point it will be minus 3 dB. I will show you how to, to choose it in the next slide, but in this slide we will just um, analyze the characteristic of the transfer function itself. So in order to understand this plot, yes, we look at this point where roughly here the phase shift which is the angular of the transfer function will be minus 45 degree and the amplitude will be minus 3 dB the frequency will be 1 kHz. What does it mean? It just means if we have the input as a simple sine wave oscillating at the frequency of 1 kHz and the amplitude is 1 then at the output, if we measure the output signal we will have the output signal also oscillating at 1 kHz but the amplitude is attenuated by minus 3 dB it means the amplitude will be roughly like 70% amplitude of the input so it will be roughly like 0 0.7 volt and the angle of the output will be minus 45 degree that's how we can look at it if we have another example for example if we have the input sine wave oscillating at uh, 0 0.1 hertz the angle of the input sine wave is 0 degree then we measure the output we can know the characteristic of the output sine wave by looking at the transfer function so if we look at the transfer function at 0 0.1 hertz because we have the input sine wave oscillating at the frequency of 0 0.1 hertz we can see there is no or we can say like 0 dB in the transfer function it means one amplitude of the sine wave will be preserved to be 1 at the output and for the angle because the angle of the sine waves is like 0 degree and at this point we can assume that roughly phase shift will be roughly 0 degree it means at the output the angle of the sine wave is zero degree and the frequency of the output also 0 0.1 hertz that's how we look at the transfer function and why do we call it low pass filter by looking at the transfer function since you can see there's a range where the transfer function has 0 dB and that range is called the pass range because whatever you have almost at the input will go out at the output doesn't change the characteristic of the input signal sine wave but if you go higher frequency if your input sine wave is higher frequency we will be roughly at this slope decreasing slope so the output will still preserve oscillating at the same frequency with the input but the amplitude is attenuated and also there will be the shift in the phase compared to the input so that's why the transfer function passes signal sine wave oscillating with the frequency roughly less than 1 kilohertz or any frequency less than this one anything less than the frequency of the breakpoint frequency, the frequency where we can see that there's the uh, attenuated of minus 3 dB and phase shift of minus 45 degree then we say is where we have the bandwidth of the low pass filter everything below that frequency passes through the output everything above is attenuated so that's why it passes through the low frequency so that's why we call it low pass filter and next slide I will show you how to define this point define the frequency at which we will have the minus 3 dB in the transfer function amplitude and the phase shift of 
minus 45 degree in the transfer function. And that point, that frequency defines the bandwidth of the low pass filter. So we observe, again, we preserve the transfer function that we derived in the previous slide here. And here's the definition of the minus 3 dB angular frequency. And according to this definition, we can easily find out our frequency, the frequency at the minus 3 dB in the amplitude of the transfer function by this form. So if our objective is to define a low pass filter with the bandwidth of 1 kHz, in other words, the frequency at which the transfer function amplitude is minus by 3 dB, we have, okay, for this formula, now we define 1 kHz here. However, we have two unknown, and we have only one equation. That's where we have to randomly choose one of the value here. So I to to define the resistor at one kilo ohm, so that I can deduce the value of the according accordingly capacitance is this value. That's it. So first, how to define the bandwidth of the low pass filter? We need to derive the transfer function. Or if you already remember, because you already work with that for many times, then you will have this formula, and then. The objective is to have the bandwidth of 1 kHz, so it means we have this frequency defined according to, to our objective. And then we just need to find, we just need to define one more unknown. In this case, I choose resistor, but you can choose to define the capacitor and then calculate the resistance accordingly. However, I just, I just like to choose the resistance to be 1 kilo ohm and then I can calculate my res capacitance accordingly and that's the end of the theory now I will move to cadence to simulate what we calculated here and look at the transfer characteristic of the systems to see whether we obtain something we expect to see and it means in cadence I will demonstrate how to draw the low pass filter and also how to analyze the circuit in frequency domain or we can usually say the AC analysis of the circuit. Okay, now I already opened the cadence and for the starting we will create a library where we will have our circuit. We can name it low pass filter. Let's say trial one maybe and we can say do not process the information I think it will be here yes this is what we created now we can choose the library that we just created and we add new and we add cell view and you can see here we can start to choose it and the cell the cell means the schematic will be included in this library. So the name of the, the cell is the, the name and the type is the schematic type. You can see here, type is schematic. So I will name it a low pass filter, simply low pass filter. And we press OK. Now we have the schematic opened. In order to start with a low pass filter, we need a source and the, the source I would choose the, the AC source, so the AC source is just a simple sinusoidal source. So we can choose create and choose instance, or we can see the shortcut here, I, and we will say instance. And we choose um, analog lib, which is the simple library, the very basic library and supported in cadence. And what we choose is the vSYN. Vsyn means the voltage that we can use and then we press in the symbol now we can have our source here and then we can press I again no we cannot so we can just uh, create instance again it doesn't 
So we press escape, then we press I, and we choose resistor. Cell view resistor. Rest, maybe. Yes. Symbol. And uh, we can flip it later. Then, or we can just keep it like that. We press escape. And we choose this component. We choose this component and we press Q. We press Q. Then we can change it to cap. I mean, capacitor. We can specify it as we calculated 159 nanofarad. So now it will change to the capacitor. This one, we press Q to open the property. It's already 1 kilo ohm. That's nice. We just need to flip it to make it look nice. You can here rotate. Rotate. Okay. Mm. Okay. Sorry, sorry about this one. It's about the virtual machine provided by university, so I can use cadence. Now we can connect the wiring together. And of course, we need the ground, right? We can press I and we say GND, which is the ground. We press in symbol to have the ground symbol 1, 2, and we press W to have the wire for connecting them together. So now our circuit almost ready. We need to have the uh, AC source to be defined. Let's say press Q and uh, to do the AC analysis, we need to have the AC magnitude. Let's put the AC magnitude to be 1. AC phase, if we put nothing, it will be 0 by auto by default. Nothing. And we just need to care that the AC magnitude is 1. And we press OK. We need to put the AC magnitude to, to be 1 so we can do the AC analysis. Otherwise, we will encounter some error. Now let's check and save our circuit. It seems nothing nothing critical or we can see here save check and save with no errors so that's good now our schematic is ready we need to create a cell analysis cell to uh, to be attached to our circuit we go to ADE assembler and we create a new view because we did not have or we have not got any uh, mesh draw mesh draw is a file for analysis for simulation and the cell is let's say yes low pass filter cell and the view is mesh draw and we press ok now we got the mesh draw file we can add the test we open this one click to add test this is where we can choose the schematic to be attached to our simulation and the library, of course, the library is the one that we create and where we put our schematic. We choose edit, of course. We need to edit the, the thing. And it will guide us to this page. But uh, at this one, it's not interesting yet. We can go to another view of the mesh file. You can see the blue arrow here. Click on it. And it will guide to another perspective of the mesh draw. In this perspective, we can add the signal that we want to see. Okay, now let's add the signal. You can see this is the probe, and it indicates where we can measure the signal or add the signal that we want to measure during the simulation, during the analysis. First, we will choose signal, and we will put it here. And Click in the detail column, double click and you will see the three dot symbol. Click in the three dot symbol and we will choose the signal where we want to see. 
let's choose the input even though it's not so relevant when we want to see the AC analysis but let's just edit we will have more things to do with the circuit later in another video but in this video I will just demonstrate that okay we will add it now let's add another signal and that signal is very important this is where we have the output where we can see the transfer characteristic right so we click on it and we got that signal we need to save them it's very important you need to save them so after the analysis we can plot them go to the blue arrow again so that we can turn to the analysis size now under the analysis we click add analysis okay there are many options of analysis and what do we want we want to see the AC analysis so that we can check the transfer characteristic of our low pass filter and the star frequency we would choose maybe around like very small but we cannot choose zero we cannot choose zero because in the border plot we use 20 log 10 20 log of base 10 so if we use the log 10 we cannot uh, start with zero so we need to start something very close to zero let's say that's very close to zero and the star frequency I want to be like 100 megahertz so it could be 100 e plus 6 so e plus 6 is a scientific notation saying this is 100 times 10 to the power of 6 in other words is 100 megahertz and we click OK of course the swift frequency again double click and you will see the property that we set for that IC analysis with swift variable is frequency okay the swift range of the frequency is from 0 0.01 hertz to 100 megahertz and we click OK now we can click the blue arrow again and we go back here in another perspective of mesh to 5 make sure that we save both of the signal and here you can see there are some button in order to run the analysis that we just created we click in this green arrow and you can see it's running here the interactive is running and uh, that interactive means indicating that our simulation running and the status now is finished I've run some simulations before we can close them by right click in the current interactive and we can choose close all the tabs but keep our current interactive okay now let's plot in order to plot the AC or the transfer characteristic of our circuit we need to to plot we need to plot from the output signal sorry it might be a little bit too fast so this is our mesh profile and this is the low pass schematic that we created earlier we click in the schematic and we know that okay in order to see the transfer characteristic we need to plot the signal from this side not from this side and that side is the net 4 side the net 4 is the name if we don't name them then it will have some name like that now we choose the graph the column where it contains the graph with mean the results and we right click and we choose direct plot and we choose AC magnitude and phase we click on it and now we need to choose the signal that we want to plot and the signal indicated by the wiring sorry here make sure that you choose it okay now I choose it you can see when I choose it the signal is chosen color with different color and now we press on this one again and we we wait to see the results now we got the results you can see that we got the face and the DB20 DB20 means they got 20 times log 10 the transfer function amplitude we can split the trace to easier observe we right click and we choose split current stripe we choose traces maybe it's not so normal to have the face above the amplitude we can change them let's drag it here 
and then we split the traces again. Now we got the amplitude on top and we got the phase at the bottom. According because we already set the values for the resistor and the capacitor according to what we calculated earlier, so of course our breakpoint or the minus 3 dB frequency must be around 1 kHz. It's not like must be very strictly, but uh, it should be around 1 kHz. How can we measure them, right? We, we can just click in either one of the graph and we press V so we can got the vertical measurement bar and we can move it around. Now let's move it around to 1 kilohertz. So this is the closest value to 1 kilohertz that we can have and if you look at the um, amplitude in dB it's minus 3 dB. This is what we like, right? Because earlier we defined that the minus 3 dB frequency is where we have the decrease minus 3 dB compared to our amplitude. The passing amplitude is 0 dB, so we want to have lower 3 dB. So 0 minus 3 dB is minus 3 dB. And at that same frequency, we can see the phase shift or the angular value of our transfer function is also around like minus 44, roughly minus 45. So it's correct. So we can say that the way that we calculate and design our low pass filter is good. I want to have a final test. The final test is to see if we set the AC magnitude in our VSYN source. VSYN means the source to generate the sinusoidal signal. So I want to see whether if I change the AC magnitude to another value, do we obtain the same transfer characteristic? Because the transfer char characteristic, if you remember, during the time that we derived it, doesn't depend on the amplitude of our input signal, but it depends on the characteristic of the, sy of the system or the circuit itself depends on the resistor and the capacitor, not the amplitude of the input sine wave. So that's why I guess if we change AC magnitude to another value, we should obtain the same transfer characteristic. But if it's not, then I'm wrong. Let's try it out. Activity, and we go to the uh, schematic again. I choose the activity here because uh, it's just like in Linux. But if you can change to another window, just change to another window where you can have your schematic. Okay, now I can choose the source, the vision source. Press Q to change the property, and I will change the AC magnitude to, let's say, 5. When I press 5, by default, the unit is bolt. We press OK. Now we check again, click on the vision source, press Q, and we see 5 volt. OK, that's good. Now we go check and save, and we go back to our mesh profile, and we run the simulation again. And we wait. OK, now the simulation is finished. We also know that we need to see the transfer characteristic at the output signal. And the output signal is defined at the net 4 because we have not named that uh, connection. So by default, it just say that connection is named net 4. Okay. Now this is the graph where we can plot our result. Right click and we choose direct plot. Again, we choose AC magnitude and phase. We choose the signal here. Make sure that we choose the signal. It's not. This is not we choosing the signal yet. We click on here now. When we choose the signal, only the part of the signal should be highlighted. So only the wiring at that signal should be highlighted like this. And we press this green button again. And we wait for the result. Okay, now the result appeared. We can split the trace and we see this is the magnitude is down there and the phase is up there. Uh, let's check the vertical. 
Okay. You can see that the uh, magnitude is changed. The magnitude of the um, transfer characteristic is changing. But the minus 3 dB point frequency is not been changed. You know why? Because the maximum, or let's say, the passing amplitude in the transfer function is uh, 13 dB. So minus 3 dB is the frequency where we have the amplitude lower. 3 dB then the passing magnitude or the maximum amplitude. So th our maximum amplitude is 13 dB. Minus 3 is 10 dB. So let's move it to close to 1 kilohertz and we see it's 10 dB. It's exactly 3 dB below the maximum amplitude here. And the phase shift is again still minus 45. So I'm wrong. I'm wrong about the, the way that we will have the same transfer function. However, Actually, this one is only mostly like um, we're plotting based on the output signal. What happens if we do the ratio only? Okay, let's see. We go to maybe we can see tool and we use calculator. We can choose this one over. this signal or oh, we cannot do that mm. well VF we choose this one yes and we this is our output signal in frequency domain and we want to divide it by the input signal in frequency domain or oh, it's change okay so I will copy this one copy it and I choose the output and I paste what I have copy and then I want to see the result of this ratio this should be the appropriate definition of our transfer function the output signal in frequency domain divided by the input signal in frequency domain and we can see here evaluate buffer and this is the signal that we have you can see Let's check, let's check. This is the magnitude. Mm. Magnitude is one. It's not in the same unit. How can we do it in the same unit? Uh, we choose tool again. We choose calculator and we type it 20 times log. I think that function log will be here. Choose the function and we can choose all and we look. Yeah, db20. So we choose it. And let's plot this one. We can delete the trace here. Okay, now let's plot it again. Tool, calculator. And this is what we choose. Okay, let's let's see. Um, it seems like we have an error. Maybe. Yes, if we check here, we have an error undefined one VF so we can go back to the calculator and check oh okay now I deleted let's see uh, this is the face we can delete the face okay now let's check use the vertical thing Okay, now if you see that this one is like minus 31 micro dB, or if you look on this side, 
it means it's really close to 0 dB. This is what we achieve when we set our um, AC magnitude to be 1, right? So it's, it, this, is, this is exactly what we define as the transfer function. This is not exactly what we define as the transfer function because this is only like a Fourier transform of our output signal. But this one is the Fourier transform of the ratio between the output signal and the input signal in the frequency domain. So that's why we can see the maximum is 0 dB and as 1, as 1, as 1 kilohertz, we got minus 3 dB. This is exactly what we have earlier. So just be careful. If you're going to set the AC magnitude of the vision source to achieve the right transfer function value, the maximum, the, the right maximum transfer function value of the transfer function itself, please pay attention to the AC magnitude. You should need you need to set it to 1 in order to achieve the right maximum value otherwise you will achieve the wrong not so wrong but uh, it's not as defined but the, the breakpoint frequency, the minus 3 dB frequency stays still, stays still, stays the same it's still where you got the uh, lower 3 dB compared to the maximum of the magnitude Okay. Now if we go to the calculator again, here the calculator, after the expression here, we can save it into our simulation by click on this button, send to the buffer expression. What does it mean? Just click on it and we go to the mesh draw file. Our mesh draw file, I think here. Let's go to the mesh draw file here. We go to the output setup. See, this is what we imported or we just import an expression from our calculator into our simulation we cannot save it because it's just an expression but let's see if we press run and we will have something now if we press on this one and we plot it just plot we don't need to direct plot and we can see yes this is 0 dB for our transfer characteristic and press V so we can got the vertical bar and we move it to 1 kilo ohm sorry 1 kilohertz and we got minus 3 dB yes this is where we got the minus 3 dB frequency where we define our bandwidth of the low pass filter any frequency lower than 1 kilohertz passes through to the output almost unaffected that's why it's low pass filter any frequency any input sine wave with frequency lower than 1 kilo 1 kilohertz, the output will stay the same almost at the input. And that thing we will demonstrate in the next video. Thank you so much for watching this video. I hope that is helpful. If you find that is helpful, please give me a like or subscribe. And uh, if you want to see the plot, how to plot this transfer function from the derivation without using Cadence simulation, like you can use Python to plot the transfer function with the simulation in Cadence. You can find the link of the code in the description section of the video. Please look at it and check out the description section of this video. It has lots of useful information. Thank you so much for watching. See you in the next video of Cadence. Goodbye.